Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot and another episode of Technique Tuesday. I have a super cool technique for you today. The other day, I made myself a cup of tea and, you know, did the honey and the ginger and that kind of thing, you know, the stuff you do to keep your immune system strong. And when I went back into the kitchen and grabbed my tea bag that I had taken out of my cup and set aside, I was looking at it thinking, wow, look at the stains on that and how unique it is. Kind of looks vintage to me. So, of course, I ran to the computer thinking, wow, has anybody else, you know, done something with these? I mean, as stampers and crafters, you know, we do things with dryer sheets and things with bleach and all kinds of stuff. So I thought, well, what about tea bags? So I did not find, other than maybe one or two um, cards that people had um, used tea bags to create a card with, um, years ago i think the the one i saw was from like 2012 or something like that somebody had um, done a card using a tea bag but what i did find and i will put it in the description of the blog is there's an artist by the name of ruby ruby silvius i believe i'm i'm pronouncing that correctly and she's a artist i believe she's out of europe and she did this uh, uh event sort of thing 365 days of tea bags and this lady does these amazing artworks on tea bag paper and everything from um you could think of she paints on them she does landscapes she does flowers she does all these neat things but you know they're just simple pieces of art that she puts into like um uh, her journal and they're they're beautiful i'll put a link to it in the description she's she's an amazing artist so basically what you end up with are these tiny little art pieces so as I looked through those, I thought, well, I bet I can turn those into cards. We can stamp on them, we can color them. So I did a little more research and I found in Asia, there are people that actually steep their tea and they use the tea water itself, the dye in the teas to actually paint. So they're painting with tea water. So it's it's amazing. I mean, it was it was really interesting to see. So anyway, I got all excited, and what I've done now is I've steeped a few bags of tea, um, and I've created some cards using these tea bags, and how simple it is to make this really kind of unique and vintage looking art on your cards. So here's a couple of samples on this one. And I'm going to show you how to open these tea bags, how to get the tea out of them without, you know, destroying them. And you can either use them small like this. I'll show you how to empty it out to where you can use it like this or open it up and use it as just one of your sheets. And you'll end up with you know, the tea bag paper that looks like this. Now, also what I saw people do with these tea bag papers is they, they take, and each tea that you use is going to have a different, which is really cool, it's going to have different staining on it depending on what kind of tea is in it. So if it's got black tea, it may uh, make these darker. If it has green tea, it may have a little more faint uh, coloring to it, um, iced tea, hot tea, they, they, they all are going to be different. And beside the fact that they use these tea bag papers, not only does this one lady paint on them, some people do prints on them or paint on them 
and they actually sew them to fabric. It, it's, it's really interesting to look at. But anyway, so it's been transferred to fabric. Um, some people take out the tea leaves, and I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, uh, sand art, uh, where people take sand and they, they make paintings and drawings out of different colors of sand. Well, there's actually artists that use tea leaves to do the same sort of art. It's, it's quite interesting. Not something I could probably ever do. So all we're going to do today is we're going to take some of these really cool tea bags and we're going to make some cards with them. Now the first one I did, I did with opening the tea bag. I stamped on it and I found our regular stamping up markers work fabulous on this technique. So you're already going to have everything you need. You can also watercolor on this. Um, you could probably use pretty much any type of medium on this. I did notice when I tried to use Stampin' Blends or alcohol markers, it, it bled a little more because it's a real fine kind of uh, tissue paper. It's fairly sturdy though, so you can do quite a bit with it. So I, this was the first one I tried, and I decided to keep the teabag tag you know, each of your tags is going to be different, depending on what tea you're using. And I believe this one was just a Twinings tea. So I flipped it over, and I stamped the B on it, and just kind of incorporated it into the project. Now this next one, um, I thought of it more of kind of like a, a, a vintage uh, Asian kind of themed card. So I stamped on it regularly like I would my regular paper with, you know, kind of doing, um, for my koi here, I kind of did a, uh, like a baby wipe technique to get several colors of the orange into um, my koi here and then the regular stamp sentiment that comes with the stamp. This set here is actually called... Uh, let's see, I know I have it out here. All, th all the good things is where this comes from. The flowers from this one come from the Lovely as a Day set. And I just thought these little delicate flowers were just perfect for this. And then my last one I did, which I really kind of like the best. Is this one here I kept the tea bag full and I used the very Versalis stamp set just used some of the leaves from it and I don't know if you can see it there I did a little bit of the um, script that's here on there just to give it a little more kind of mixed media look and colored in my you know stamped my leaves and then I just added our frosted flower embellishments. So these have uh, three different colors you can use. I think I just used the um, purple ones there. And on this tea bag, this is Yogi Tea, uh, Y O G I T. And the Yogi tea bags, each of their little tags, have these fun little sayings in them. I don't know if that's going to focus on there for you. But I thought, well, how perfect is that? I'll just use the sentiment that comes with the tea bag. Um, I think the Yogi one we're using today, the sentiment is, you are unlimited. How perfect are these? So anyway, we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you how I empty the tea out of these and how we stamp on them. I haven't decided what image we're going to put on this one. I'm, I'm kind of thinking we'll change it up a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring in a, a, I'm going to bring in a paper towel. And now, oh, and as a uh, disclaimer, I'm hoping this works. As of the last three days, on top of everything else everybody else is going through, um, the server that hosts my website is working intermittently. 
So if you are trying to join my April um, Mystery Hostess um, event that's going on the month of April, what I'm doing is if you go on my online store and you use April's Hostess code and you do a minimum $20 order before tax and shipping, you'll be entered to win one of these fabulous kerchief card kits. I have two of them that I'll be giving away, one prize per um, person. If you do a $50 order or more, you will be entered twice to win one. So if you have trouble getting into my website, you can go directly to my store, which is Tina's Crafty Ink Spot dot stampin' up dot net. And you can shop directly there. Just make sure that you use April Sostis code in order to be entered. And I'll be giving I'll be doing the drawing for the two winners on April 30th, and you will be notified by email. But like I said, my web page has been hit and miss the last three days because of the host computers i think it's everybody's at home and they're on the internet and you know i'm sure the internet uh world is getting a little overwhelmed you know but anyway so that's april's um giveaway so let's get started now i want to use the front side of this tea bag on the back side you can see where it's been folded and stapled okay now if you want to open it all the way up like this then you will gently remove that staple and unfold it and i will show you how to do that also but on this one we're just going to empty the tea out and try to keep it intact the best we can so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the back side of this and i'm just going to put a little little slit through i'm not going all the way through i'm just doing one layer of it and then i'm just going to carefully empty out my tea see how it kind of looks like sand and it's different colors i guess that's why there's artists that actually do tea leaf paintings it's it's really interesting if you haven't seen it before um, Google it on YouTube, tea leaf paintings. So you can just gently, you see it's got a little pocket there. Just gently kind of move your tea around and it'll come out your slit there and you end up with this nice little tea bag. So I'm going to move this or empty this out here. And you do have to wait until your tea bag is dry. I just set it on a little, um, I have a little tea bag like spoon holder that I set my tea bags on I just leave it and let it dry overnight and um, it'll come up with all these cool little stains on it I did notice though if you take your tea bag out of your your cup and you lay it on a paper towel to dry overnight the problem with that is is the staining will go to the paper towel and you lose some of your staining effect there so I'll show you what I mean. Here is some iced tea bags I have, which are round tea bags. How fun is that? But see where I laid them here? Some of them, I lost some of my staining. It transferred to the paper towel. So if you want more staining and more character to it, let it um, dry on a dish. And that way the staining will stay on the... Um, the paper I think I don't know that this is really paper it's it's really an interesting texture so we've got our tea bag here and what should we do for design I'm thinking you know what would be really cute and we're gonna try it together is I'm going to take this honeybee set and I think I'm gonna put a bumblebee on here so I'm gonna bring in move some stuff aside here so I'm just going to bring in my stamparatus I want to be able to get a nice solid image on here 
Now this kind of folds up and all you need to do is just kind of unfold it. It's got a little crease in it, which is fine. And so when you do that, just lightly smooth it with your hand or you could, um, you know, take, if you have a iron in, you know, a craft room iron, you could even iron them out if you wanted. But I, I wanted more of the kind of vintage rustic look so, so we've got our tea bag ready and I, I want to keep my tag on there so I'm just going to take my magnet go over the very top and let's grab our bumblebee let's see if he even fits on there I don't even think I've used this bumblebee yet it looks like so let's go ahead and put the backing on him I like using the the sticky so all you do is you take your your protective off there and you line up your image and then pick it up there you go well, squeeze something else in there. Let's see if he's going to fit on here. Oh, yes. Look at that. He's going to fit perfectly on there. But before I use him, I want to do some more of this little script writing. I think it just kind of adds to make it look a little more um, vintage. And this is the very Versalis. Let's see, where do I want my writing? I'm not going to cover the whole thing, I don't think. So I'm going to line that up. And now I'm just going to use early espresso. I don't want it really bold. So I'm just going to kind of use a brown on here. Let's ink up our stamp. And you'll see it takes the ink really well. So let's stamp that on there. And see, I want it a little bit more here. So that's why I did it in the Stamparatus. So that I can stamp again. So I'm just going to ink that up again. I think I didn't go all the way down my stamp there. So let's stamp that one more time. There we go. Doesn't that look neat? Okay, so... Clean off my stamp. And let's put our bumblebee in there. I think I will probably just do the bumblebee in the same kind of early espresso. Let's line him up on there. Ink it up. Let's see how he does. Oh, okay. I need to hit him again. I may have to do him in black to make him stand out a little more, but let's add another coat and see how this does since I did it in brown first I can still go over it in black okay it's not showing up real well so I think I will bring in my black I want him a little more defined so I'm just going to bring in my black memento and since we're on the stamparatus this is easy to do already lined up and ready to go I'm sure you could probably even heat emboss on these if you wanted to they're pretty sturdy yeah I like that a lot better I'm gonna hit that one more time at least mainly the body I want the body to be a little bolder Okay, 
There we go. That's really neat looking. Okay, we'll clean up our stamp. Now I'm just going to bring in a marker. Oops. Clean to paint his body a little bit. I think I'm just going to use... Let's use Mango Melody. We'll color his body a little. And you'll see your markers color really well on this. Okay. So we've got our little B. And I can even bring in a little black marker if I want to add a little more highlights to him. You know, maybe fill in some of the blank spots. There we go. And now, I want to keep it kind of vintage. If we wanted, we could even add a few flowers on here if we wanted to. And set that aside. And let's see if we have a piece. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the backing in uh, Very Vanilla. Um, I think wh uh, white would work, but I think it'll just be a little bit harsh. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Yep, I like that. So I'm going to trim this down. I have a little bit of tea still coming out of here. Oh, and the other thing, it smells fabulous. So you're going to get a twofold. You're going to get a nice card, and it's going to smell good. So let's trim this down in our trimmer. And I only want it to kind of be highlighted on here. So let's see how big this is going to be. All right, let's trim this down some. Just using the bag as a guide. It's to where I want it. So it looks like it'll be about two inches. By... Set it on there. Looks like it'll be about two by mm, two and three quarter. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little texture to this by let's grab our sponge dauber. And our early espresso. And let's just highlight the edges. Just highlight in. Now we can just use our tape runner. You can use your um, snail or you could use your um, tear and tape. I'm thinking snail might work good here. Let me just make sure I don't get it where the bag's not going to be. I don't know that I want to try to put this. Let me see if we can do the snail directly on the bag. You guys are learning this just as I'm learning all of it. Oh, look at there. It'll go right on there. So let's put some nice amount of snail on there. But you do have to be careful not to tear it. And then let's just attach it to our frame here. Let's see, will a flower look good on this one? Should we add a flower? Let's see. We could for accents. I think I'm just going to leave him as a B. Let's bring in a card base. 
and I'm going to stick with the very vanilla card base. And what I did is I took our honeycomb embossing folder, just to see how it would look, to lay just a little textured layer on here. Mmm, I like that. And then if we put this here... Yep, let's do that. So I'm going to glue this one directly down. Forgot my glue. Which way do we want that? I think we want it like that. So let's just add some glue here. that directly down uh, this piece is actually four by five and a quarter so it's it's smaller than our card base by quarter inch and now this one I want to pop this up so let's bring our dimensionals so as you can see this this is very quick and adds a unique concept to a card um, you know stampers and crafters we we use everything around the house why not tea bags so I kind of like the idea of it being just a whole tea bag but I also like the idea of when you open it up the texture of the paper to do other drawings on and like I said, you can um, you can use watercolor, you can use marker on these. They're pretty sturdy. So this is the Yogi Tea, but I like the little the little saying. So I think I'm just gonna highlight this one just a little bit around the edges with our dauber. And I, I'm going to trim this tiny little string off here. And then we're just going to pop that right up. So let's put a dimensional on there. My string's a little twisted, so I'm un untwisting it. And I think I'll just put it right, right there. And now to get my string to stay where it needs to stay, I'm going to put it where I want it. And I'm just going to put a little dab of glue down. And then hold it there for a second to dry. Kind of keep it in place there. You could add other greetings. We could put some embellishments on here. But the concept is you could put any design you would like on these tea bags. Now, then you've even got a variety. When you get into your cabinet and you start pulling out your tea bags, look at this one. We could empty the tea out of this. We've got a round design we can do on a card. Um, let me see if I have one I can open and show you how to get the full sheet. Okay, here's another one of my Yogi Tea. It feels like it's a little bit damp, but that'll be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to lightly take to the back side of where this staple is. Just get under there really gently. You could probably even use a, a toothpick. Might be a little easier. But these staples do bend fairly easily once you get under them. So I'm trying to do it without making big holes in the bag is what I'm doing. But most of your bags, you're going to have to put them... Um, on some sort of backing, be it um, white or cream, 
because they are, as you'll see, you know, translucent, pretty translucent. So putting them on the back of something is going to, you know, putting something on the back of them is going to let your design show through easier. So let's see if we can get this little staple out of here. Of course, now that I told you they bend easy, this one's kind of giving me grief. Let's see. Just about got it. I probably can't zoom in very well for you, but... Okay, so now I'll go to the front side. And pop that tiny little staple out of there. See, it's just a tiny little thing. I'll just throw that away. And then save your tags. Like this one, the Yogi T says, All knowledge is within you. Isn't that fun? My other tea bags, you know, I've got some Earl Greys. That'll just look really cool on a card itself. Or you don't need to use the tags at all if you don't want to. This one's just a, a English black tea I had. So now we're gently gonna unfold it. And you'll see it's a big kind of pocket there. Let me grab my paper towel. Oh, and I missed the paper towel. And so you just kind of tap it out of there. I missed the paper towel completely. See how that went? That's okay. And now there's going to be a little seam there. And if you open up the little pocket there a little bit, you can gently pull that seam apart. Now, if your bag is really dry, now this one's kind of still damp because I just had it last night. It'll That little seam is going to pull right apart. So if your bag is really dry and you're having trouble peeling that little seam just spritz it with just a tiny bit of water and that seam will pull right open. And there you go. And then you just take and lightly brush your tea off. Let me see if I can empty this a little. Mm, kind of like glitter. It's everywhere. So I just lightly use my thumb or finger. And if you rub it just a little bit lightly, it just pulls that tea right off there. If you have a little uh, like paintbrush or something, that might work well too. This one's still just a little damp. So it's not coming off quite as fast as the other ones did. I mean, if you wanted to, you flip it over, you could almost leave some of those little T-specks on that back side if you wanted. Just adds more texture. And remember that little seam we had there? If you don't want that on there, you just grab a hold of it and it will peel right off there. Okay. There's one on the other side. So I'm just going to grab that little area, and it just peels it right down. And you have a tea bag to use there. Whoops, that stuck to me. And then just let them dry well. You can hit it a little bit with your heat tool if your bag is still damp if you want. Then if you just kind of rub your fingers over it, all that loose tea will just come right off. So let's do a little set of flowers on one of those. And I'll show you the different ways to color them. So I'm going to grab one that's already dry. And I've trimmed it down. So I'm actually using just a part of it. And I'm going to bring my Stamparatus back in.
And the reason I'm doing this is so I can stamp twice if I need to. I'm just going to hold that down a little bit, smooth it out with my finger. Oops, or wrinkle it with my finger. Let's see how that works. All right, let's grab these little flowers right here are adorable. So I'm just going to do another one with that. Well, you know what? Let's see what else we got. What do we got laying here? Oh, let's try these flowers. Let's see how they look. I'm still not used to how small my little space is by my camera. Okay, I need to move that up a little because I'm not using the whole stamp. I'm just going to lightly put those down on the corners to hold it in place. Okay, now this one, I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp it in the black, black memento. I said you can use any colors. Matter of fact, we could even do green, but let's see how this does. I haven't done this one yet. Okay, I'm going to hit it one more time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's wipe our stamp off. I still haven't found my chamois. My Simply Chamois for cleaning my stamps. I'm almost nervous to keep using my baby wipes since they're a rare commodity these days. So let's set that aside. So what I could, and you'll be able to see it quite well laying on your, your white paper. So let's grab a nice vibrant green. This is Granny Apple Green, regular marker. Make sure that's nice and dry. And let's color some leaves. See, the markers work really well on this. I did try the uh, blends markers, the alcohol markers, and you just have to be really careful to paint or to color farther inside your lines because the alcohol uh, markers seem to bleed uh, quite a bit. So just think about that if you decide to use those markers. Now you can do, uh, you can use acrylic paint on this. You can use watercolor paints. Um, it, it, they all work. I did, uh, I did want to try doing watercolor on one, and I eventually will. Now you can also use your white gel pens on here if you want a kind of bright image. Let's see how that works. Let's see. Let me get my marker started here. FT everywhere. Let's see how the white looks on here. Seems to work pretty good. I'm just not solid coloring it. I'm actually leaving some of those uh, those black uh, accent lines. I'm not sure. I don't have one available. I'm not sure if your chalk marker would show up on this very well. But no, you know... Your inks are going to go through to your background, so make sure you have something underneath um, because this is really fine 
and the inks go through the uh, paper, the tea paper. I really like that. And do some white flowers. And then when we get ready to put it on a piece, you're going to have these really nice little flowers there. So let's try a different color. What if we wanted, what if we want a pink flower in here too? <clears throat> I'm going to move that away because it will bleed through. Let's see how pink turns out, shows up. Mmm, that seems to work really well, too. And we can add a little orange center on that one. Maybe a little orange on that one. So there you go. It's just like coloring on some really fine paper. And it's a neat technique. You could go crazy with this. I hope you'll try it. And if you do, please feel free to share what you make with your tea bags. Uh, either on my Facebook page, Tina's Crafty Ink Spot, or share them right here on my webpage. I'd love to see them. Email them to me. Let me know how you did and what you thought of it. It's a really fun and unique, you know, I go for unique, you know that. So this, right up there in the unique categories. Look at that. That's the one we did today. I'm still going to say this one is my all-time favorite. And the embossing folder, just so you know, that I used for this. I think it's retired, but I just embossed a strip just to give it a little texture. And I wanted to stick with my tea bag being the main focal item. So that's why we kept this really plain. It's great art. It's fun. Be sure to check out the link I'm going to put in here from uh, the artist Ruby Sil Sil Silvius, I believe is her name. She has done some amazing artwork on little tiny tea bags. It, it's amazing. So I hope you try it and I hope you enjoyed today's technique. Don't forget, April, every order you do in my store of $20 or more, you will be entered to win a free kerchief card kit. These are not available. These uh, went away with... Um, celebrations but i have two to give away and it'll help you break the blahs of being stuck at home let's make cards let's share the the happiness send cards to your health care workers and doctors and friends that are having to work through this know that uh, our heart and our prayers go out to you and your families that you stay safe and healthy and know that we love you so I hope you have a very happy Stampin' Day. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me.